good morning and welcome to another episode of Gone Fishing on the Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel. Lots of good stuff going on over there, including a very successful weekend all around in Miami sports. Uh, you had a huge win for the Dolphins yesterday. You had the Hurricanes winning on Saturday. And then you've got the Marlins winning their series against the Philadelphia Phillies uh, to keep pace in the wild card and perhaps more importantly, gain that tiebreaker advantage on the Phillies if it's so if it does come down to that uh, for the Marlins. So they're sitting at 74 and 69 at the time of recording here on Monday morning. It is September 11th here. Half a game back in the wild card. And I'm going to get right into it. Your minor league players of the week. It's going to be Jake Thompson at double A here. The Marlins 2022 draft pick. A little bit old for the level of 25 years old. But he gets the call to double A. And he has produced since getting the call over his last week. Uh, hitting 368 with a 458 on base. 684 slugging. 4 and 11 to 43 OPS. Jake Thompson. Fantastic week for him so far at Pensacola. And then for your minor league pitcher of the week, it's going to be our old friend, Ryan Weathers. Uh, he pitched seven scoreless innings with seven strikeouts in his last outing. He's pitched 12 scoreless innings thus far uh, in September for triple a uh, for, for triple a Jacksonville for the Marlins. And then your major league players of the week. And we have a, a first time uh, award winner for the hitters. It's going to be Jacob Stallings. Uh, 333 average, 333 on base, 750 uh, slugging for a 1083 OPS, including a couple of really clutch uh, plays. Jacob Stalling swung, swinging a hot bat of late. Uh, the go-ahead home run in the 3-2 victory over the Phillies in game one of the series was fantastic. Uh, just a shout-out to Jacob Stallings. He has raised his play significantly. And then for your pitcher of the week, could it be anybody else other than Tanner Scott? I mean, you want to talk about earning the job. Um, Tanner Scott has done everything possible and then some. As far as I'm concerned, the closer job is absolutely closed. It is Tanner Scott. Three and two-thirds innings, no earned run, six strikeouts, one hit, three saves in all of his appearances this week. And then on top of that, you've got... The inning and two, the five out save that he got Sunday against the Phillies coming in second and third, one out strikes out the, the first, uh, the two batter, the next two batters he sees to get out of the jam. And then in the ninth inning, <laughs> he goes ahead, he, he lets the first two batters reach, rolls a double play ball, and then he gets the next batter, and then he gets the next batter to, uh, Punches him out, gets the five out save in a huge come from behind win for the Marlins. Uh, but I want to talk about this. There, you know, we there was a lot made of this stretch going into it. You know, you had three at home versus at, uh, LA, then it was three at on, on the road versus Philadelphia. Now they're going to go to Milwaukee for four, and then they've got three at home versus Atlanta after that, and then the schedule lightens up just a little bit. But so far, so good. I mean, it, in this 13-game stretch, their first two series, the first six games of the stretch, four and two uh, against really high-quality competition that's playing also pretty well at the time. You know, they swept the Nationals, who at the time were very hot. And then you go and you win your series against the Dodgers, who are, you know, playing well, or, or were at the time. Um, you beat the Phillies, who have been as hot as anyone in baseball over the last couple of months. Uh, two out of three. And it, and it does feel like it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors for the Marlins right now. But these guys are, are I mean, uh, this team is really just like the little engine that could, man. It's they, they just, for some reason, they just don't stop. And 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 it even on paper, when it, it just seems like everything makes sense, you know, the logical thing is when Sandy goes down, when Soler goes down, okay, the team runs out of gas. Good run. You know, stayed competitive through September. Uh, you know, not much more you can ask for at that point, right? Well, they give you a little bit more than you can ask for over this last week. Winning four out of six, staying in it, just a half game out of the wild card, uh, you know, half a game back of Atlanta. 
Uh, and, you know, and it does, and I do want to just touch on a little bit the, the, the offense by committee approach that we've been seeing of late. Because, you know, early on in that, in that uh, LA series, the bats were just on fire. I mean, you had, you had jazz going crazy. You had Jake Berger hitting homers. You had Josh Bell hitting balls out of the ballpark. And it's not, and I, and I don't say that as if it's surprising, but it's just, you've got so many different guys doing it for you right now. Um, Jesus Sanchez has been on a tear of late. Brian De La Cruz was the hero last night or in yesterday's game. Uh, Jacob Stallings has done it. So right now, all throughout the offense, you're getting you're getting production from guys. Garrett Hampson, in his time that he's been up with the Marlins this time around, he's been fantastic. He's been he's been really good uh, this time around for the Marlins here. Uh, Xavier Edwards has been solid since he's come up. Dane Myers had a big hit uh, in yesterday's game. So right now it's just the Marlins are getting contributions from just about everywhere. And it's kind of what this team is going to have to do uh, because there's really not the one superstar that you lean on, at least, you know, consistently Luis Arais, obviously, you know, you, you count on him for, for hits, but I wouldn't say that you necessarily count on him for run production. Uh, obviously when he does come up with runners in scoring position, you, you expect those guys to score. Um, but with him, it's really more about setting the table for the guys that are going to come up and drive him home. Um, and those guys have been producing of late. And it's just, it's been, it's been all throughout the lineup. It's been contagious. It's been really fun to see. Um, you know, I think the vibes around the team are fantastic. Even with some of the, even with some of the, some of the challenges that they still have ahead of them, you know, you're going into seven really, really, really tough games here against Milwaukee and Atlanta with a team that's down Sandy Alcantara with a team that, you know, the bullpen is being used as, as frequently as it ever has been uh, this season for the Marlins. And it, and it really is kind of poetic that, you know, they kind of got here on the back of the bullpen in the first half and they're really having to ride on the bullpen to kind of lead them through this this time here at the end. And if they do make the playoffs, it'll be in part because the bullpen played such a pivotal role. But at the same time, you know, it does seem like there's a convergence of things that are going right for this team uh, as well. Edward Cabrera, I, I didn't get to touch on him, but his his appearance versus the versus the Dodgers in that second game of the series where he goes four scoreless innings you know, only walks two, strikes out eight Dodgers. He's going to absolutely get uh, a start the next go around in the rotation, and he'll have earned it. Um, you know, you look at Jesus Lazardo, who's pitching as well as he has all season long right now. Um, you know, it's it's a rotation that it, it, you're just hoping that Perez and Lazardo can lead it. Cabrera was very encouraging in his last start. If he can kind of step in and be your third or fourth guy, depending on how you feel about Braxton, uh, you know, the next guy behind those, uh, those two guys. And then, you know, you just hope and pray that, that this flexor strain with Sandy is not significant at all. And that, you know, hopefully shortly after the IL, the IL stint, he'll be, he'll be ready and raring to go. It's not the most likely thing in the world. Um, but you do have to hold out that hope for this team. But then on top of that, the bullpen is also, you know, knock on wood here, healthier than it's ever been with uh, David Robertson, who's come in into that, you know, middle innings role. And he's been much better since he's taken on that role. Uh, Steven Okert, uh, JT Chagua, uh Soriano and Hoeing, even even with the the rough performances over the last week or so, I think those guys are still respectable arms out of the pen. Um, AJ Puck, uh, Andrew Nardi, obviously Tanner Scott. You know the the bullpen has really it's about as it's about as deep as you can hope for um, at this point in the season, where you've got five or six guys that you. you generally for the most part that you trust um even in pretty high leverage spots 
for, for this Marlins team. So right now you're looking at a team that even with the schedule, what it is, even with the issues in the, in the starting rotation, um, the bullpen is deeper than it's ever been. The, the, the offense is kind of has found a spark in a way that it, it just quite frankly, hasn't, um, you know, all year long. So far in the month of September, they played nine games. They've scored 55 runs, a little over six runs a game. I don't think that's the kind of production you're going to get all September. Um, but if it is, then you're very likely talking about this as a playoff team. And I, and I feel very comfortable saying that, putting that on record. If the Marlins continue to score six runs a game in the month of September, they will make the third wild card in the NL East. Um, now, do I think that's going to happen? I don't know about the six runs per game part, but uh, at this point, you know, I think I, I don't think I can really count out this team at this point because we've come to a point with them where, especially over the last month and a half, really, where it's kind of been, okay, season ends now. And then they win a few more. Okay, now it's done. And then they win a few more. And so it's just, it's just with this team, it's, it's almost, it feels like an exercise of futility counting these guys out. Um, you know, and while I might disagree from time to time on the day-to-day -day decisions um, that's made by Skip, I do think that it's important to touch on the fact that, you know, the, the resiliency, the, the, the never hanging your head when you're down a few runs early in the game, um, that really touches on a, a culture that's being established uh, in the clubhouse. Um, the kind of leaders that you have in the clubhouse, whether it's at eyes and, and, and Sandy and, and Guriel and, and guys like that, you know, it, it does speak to a little bit of, of what's being built here and kind of the, you know, a lot of the a lot of the procedural day to day managerial stuff I th I think will be on the job training uh, for Skip, but I do think that he does have the right temperament for this team. Uh, I think he's helped establish a a solid culture uh, to this point for for the for the ball club. Um, and you know I I can't really tell you what's going to happen over this next seven over this over this uh, you know final stretch of the season these last nineteen games, um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count the Marlins out either. I mean especially if if Sandy gets gets back into the fold here, and then you've got a rotation where you've got Sandy Luzardo Yuri a potentially revitalized Edward Cabrera who when he was on last year he was great. Um, and then Braxton Garrett, and then you can kind of put Johnny Cueto, who's, you know, I, I think he's had his moments this year, but he's generally speaking struggled. Um, and I think he would be better suited as, as potentially a, a bulk guy, a long relief, uh, innings eater type at this point in his career. Um, you can you can definitely do damage with that staff going into the into the postseason, especially with the bullpen as deep as as it is right now. So I mean, with with everything going on with the pitching, I think you're kind of looking at this, you know, these last few games where they've had to go to a bullpen game and they've had to use guys like Emmanuel De Jesus, um, and I think you're kind of looking at like a light at the end of the tunnel with that just a little bit. Um, with Cabrera coming back, with Castano getting called up. Um, Castano, I don't think he's going to make a huge difference for this team. Um, but we've seen him do well in a in like a swing starter capacity. Uh, so I do think that he can he can do that for you in a pinch and and you'll be fine with it. Um, and then the offense has been really just it's been an exciting brand of offense of late. Uh, for this team, scoring about six runs a game, doing a lot of it via the home run ball. Um, big time power surge down the stretch here. You hope that it continues. You want to see a little bit more of it. Um, 
you know, you want to see more of the young guys, Xavier Edwards, Dane Myers. I think, I think the Marlins really like what they bring to the table when they are in the lineup. Um, Garrett Hampson's contributing right now. You're just, you're just getting so many contributions from everywhere on the roster that it just, it just feels like there's a convergence of things that are starting to happen. Um, that really make the playoffs seem feasible in a way that they maybe weren't a week or two ago for the Marlins. And I think that that's great news for people who are Marlins fans watching this uh, down the stretch here and, you know, hopefully keeping that, that string of uh, South Florida sports postseason appearances alive here, uh, carrying on that baton and, and, you know, hopefully eventually down the road, passing it on to the dolphins here. Um, but that is all that I have for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We will see you next week. Uh, same time, same place. Hopefully still talking about the Marlins being in the playoff race. So we will see you then next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.